In the mid-1880s, a woman was traveling by rail, from Cape Town to Port Elizabeth, South Africa. The woman was staring out the window, as the train passed Udenhague Station, when she saw a baboon signaling the trains. Immediately, she complained to the railway authorities, who initially ignored her. How could this really be happening? In the 1870s, James Wide worked as a guard, on a section of the Cape Town Port Elizabeth Railway in South Africa, specifically, the town of Udenhag. Wide was known as, the jumper, because he jumped from one train to another, even while it was moving. But, this habit did not end well for him. In 1877, during one of his regular shifts, he slipped and fell under a moving train. The wheels of the wagon cut off his legs below the knees, and he narrowly escaped death. His amputation resulted in him losing his job, and becoming unemployed. Then, he begged the company to give him another job, but to no avail. The stubborn wide made himself a pair of peg legs and a trolley, to help himself get around. In this way, he convinced the company to rehire him as a signalman. In 1881, Wide was visiting a busy market in South Africa, when his attention was drawn to an unusual sight. A Chakma baboon driving an ox wagon. Impressed by its abilities, Wide introduced himself to the owner, and offered to buy it. At first, the owner was reluctant to sell his beloved pet, as the animal was very intelligent and helpful. Finally, he took pity on the disabled Wide, and sold it to him. The owner told Wide, that the baboon was incredibly smart, and an excellent worker, but only if it got a tot of Cape Brandy every night. If it missed a night's drink, the baboon would sulk the following day, and refuse to do anything. Wide only forgot it once, in all the years that followed, and after a day of negative behavior, and the baboon's refusal to work, he never forgot it again. Wide named it Jack, and made it his pet and personal assistant. The first thing he trained it to do, was to push his trolley, to and from work, as his house was about half a mile from the station, and the distance was quite tiring. There, Jack would push the trolley along the track, while enthusiastically jumping on it, for the faster downhill sections. Soon, Jack started helping with the housework, learning how to sweep the floors, take out the trash, and carry firewood. Very soon, the two became inseparable, and Jack saw its owner at work on a daily basis. One of Wide's jobs was to unlock the points, that allowed the drivers and engineers access to the coal sheds. Each time a locomotive driver approached, the train blew its whistle four times. Then, Wide, using crutches, would come out of his cabin, and hand him a special key. By watching this a few times, Jack became familiar with the system. So, one day, when it heard the four whistles, it ran and got the key, and handed it himself to the surprised train driver. From that day on, it became its job. But, Jack didn't stop there. As the months wore on, Wide started to train Jack, on how to change the signals, and what levers to pull, depending on how many whistles the train engineers blew. Under Wide's close supervision, Jack came to the point, where it performed its tasks flawlessly. According to witnesses, Wide, trained the baboon to such perfection, that he was able to sit in his cabin stuffing birds, etc., while the animal, which was chained up outside, pulled all the levers and points. The fact became known to the locals, and many went and watched Jack in action, giving out keys and pulling levers, causing their admiration. The railway company had learned that Wide had an assistant with him, but was ignorant of the fact that he was a baboon, and that the animal did all the work. One day, a lady traveling from Cape Town to Port Elizabeth, noticed that not a human, but a baboon, was manning the post and signaling the trains. Immediately, she reported it to the railway authorities, who initially did not believe her. Since she insisted, they sent a delegation of inspectors to Udenhag, to look into the matter. When the company learned the truth, it decided to fire wide. Fortunately, the stubborn Wide managed to convince the company's bosses to test their skills, before they fired him. The skeptical inspectors decided to test Jack's abilities with a series of difficult tasks. 
secret instructions were given to a locomotive driver, and all the spectators waited to see how Jack would fare. Every time the driver blew his horn, Jack would spring into action, and pull the correct lever, without making a single mistake. Moreover, Jack was checking all directions, to make sure the right lever had been pulled, the signal had changed, and the train was on the right track. Of course, the result left everyone, except Wide, surprised. The company rehired Wide, but also made Jack a regular employee, giving him an official employment number, and a salary of 20 cents a day, and half a bottle of beer a week. From that day on, the baboon was officially named, Signalman Jack. Jack knows the signal whistle as well as I do, also every one of the levers, as described by the visiting railway superintendent George Howe, who visited Jack in late 1889. It was very touching to see his fondness for his master. As I drew near, they were both sitting on the trolley. The baboon's arms round his master's neck, the other stroking Wide's face. Next, Howe also described the end of their meeting. The goodbye to Jack was an odd sight. The trolley on, I went to Jack to shake hands, he gazed on me for a second, undecided whether to give me his paw or his teeth. I get his paw and a grunt. A word from his master, and the strange pair disappeared into the darkness. A few months later, Jack died of tuberculosis, after nine years of continuous successful work at the railroad. Today, its skull is in the Albany Museum in Grahamstown, South Africa. James Wide lived another 30 years without his valuable assistant, until 1921, when he passed away, at the age of 71.